Harry's wife. Part 77.1 Boo! The ship sinks further. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Recent news events to catch up on. As always, the veracity of the material in the news reports I leave to you. I will provide you with the analysis of what's going on, the narcissistic dynamic, how information and responses are received and responded to, to further your understanding of narcissism. We begin with an article from page 6, written by Lee Brown, which reports as follows, and it's something that has been widely reported in the media, namely, Harry and his wife's Oprah interview booed by audience at UK Awards show. Prince Harry and his wife's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey was met with raucous boos when a clip was played at a star-studded UK awards show, according to reports. As soon as Harry's wife and Harry appeared on screen, the audience started booing, one attendee at Thursday night's National Television Awards told the Sun newspaper. And then everyone joined in. It was really loud and funny, the unidentified audience member said. The short clip from the interview, in which the exiled Sussexes made damning allegations about the royal family, including racism, was aired as part of a series of highlights from the previous year. Multiple UK outlets reported the boos erupting from the UK TV stars at the awards event in London's huge O2 arena. Although viewers on UK channel ITV just saw the clips without hearing the audience's response. Neither the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, nor Oprah Winfrey, all now neighbours in California's exclusive Monty Shit show, were at the event. So, not just a few boos, as was heard at the Royal Albert Hall a number of years ago, but overwhelming booing that was raucous and easily heard, with many people joining in. In some respects, this is no surprise. We have seen the waning popularity of the Sussexes, and, of course, this has been recorded in various polls that have been taken, one of which I reported on that was dealt with by Newsweek in an earlier part of this series. The tide has indeed turned, as I have reported previously, and the ship continues to sink. More and more people have seen through the behaviour. Of course, most don't realise that it's narcissism at work. Most people see it as downright bad manners, self-entitled brattish behaviour, disgusting lack of courtesy, etc. But the point remains, the Sussexes are not popular. This is as a consequence, of course, of the short-term, now approach of Harry's wife's narcissism and again demonstrates, as I've repeatedly explained, that she's unaware, that she doesn't know the real reason why she behaves as she does, and her narcissism guides her in the moment, so that it achieves the prime aims, as a narcissism will invariably always do, that's what it's programmed to do, but it causes repeated collateral consequences, and one is their waning popularity. Now, of course, as page six reported, Harry and his wife weren't, at the event. One would not expect them to be there, and therefore they did not witness the booing directly. However, undoubtedly it will have been reported to them. They will have seen, no doubt, on other news outlets, or it will have been mentioned to them. What effect would that have on Harry's wife? Well, of course, it's challenge fuel. There's a reaction to them, namely the booing. And as I've explained in the video, love me, hate me, but never ignore me, any kind of response that you provide us with gives us a form of validation in terms of fuel. It shows that we are on your radar. It shows that we are matter. Whether you are wanting to swing a punch at us or telling us that you love us, that response validates our existence. You have provided us with our lifeblood, fuel. However, booing is challenge fuel. And Whenever you have an interaction with the narcissist, it's broken down into either one of three outcomes. You provide us with pure fuel, 
challenge fuel, or you wound us. There is nothing else. Every interaction or lack of interaction between you and a narcissist falls into one of those three categories. And if you'd like to understand more about that, just go to the Knowledge Vault link in the video description and obtain the three interactions with the narcissist to understand more about that. Knowledge that they were booed is challenge fuel. It demonstrates that she matters because there's a response. That's not the issue, but it will threaten control. She, through her deluded mind, believes that she's universally popular and that anybody who says to the contrary is a racist idiot. Anybody that questions her is a fool and has it in for her, lacks sympathy, lacks empathy, is a hater. She is completely unable to recognise that there is any justifiable reason for disliking her. The fact that somebody could sit down with her and say, look, the reason that you're not popular is because of your behaviour towards the Queen, your behaviour in relation to Prince Philip, your behaviour towards Prince Harry, the fact that you tell the rest of the world how to think and behave whilst acting like a rampant hypocrite. She cannot see it. She might understand, well, yes, people can see that and put those views forward, but they're wrong, and here's why. Her narcissism will cause her to dismiss any suggestion that she's wrong. It will never allow her to accept accountability. She may be able to say, I understand why they might think I'm a hypocrite, and then along comes the but, as she will explain it away. The reason they boo me is they don't understand me. The reason they boo me, they're envious of me. They don't know how difficult it is to be me, typical mid-range pity play. If they had to put up with what I had to put up with, they'd be more sympathetic. How awful of them. This just demonstrates and enables me to justify, once again, that we were right to leave the United Kingdom and to leave all of these bigots behind. She can't see that the reason that people are booing her and Harry is because of their behaviour. She can't see that it's justified. Her narcissism just will not let her accept that. She does not sit there and think to herself, oh my goodness me, they all hate me, and I know why, I'm a terrible person. No, her narcissism will not allow that self-reflection. It will cause her to believe that they are wrong, that they're bigots, that they're haters, that they're racist, that they don't understand, that it's hard being her. Dismissiveness, pity plays, deflection, diminution, blame shifting and so forth. They've been poisoned by the British media. They've swallowed the narrative where the people have been briefing against me, and so forth. She will never sit down and realise that she has caused this herself. That is the efficacy of the narcissism as a self-defence mechanism. Now, what would her response be beyond this? Well, of course, I've explained to you the various thought processes that will occur, and of course, the challenge will ignite her fury, causing her to need to respond. The event has passed and therefore she can't storm on stage, grab the mic and say, sit down you motherfuckers, listen to me, you're all wrong. The direct assertion of control is not available to her. She will invariably do two things. She will complain to all of those around her about this awful treatment, along the lines that I've just explained, they don't understand, they're racist, they're bigoted, they're hate-filled, we don't need these people, they're idiots. So there will be the smearing of them in effect. And, of course, the various flunkies and the ginger poodle will nod in agreement, providing the validation that is required and the unconscious sensation of the resumption of control. There will also be incidents of dismissiveness in her own mind, the third assertion of control, where she stays in a position of withdrawal. I was right to leave that goddamn country and their hate-filled population. So each time that the incidence of this booing is reported on and pops into her consciousness, she will either reject it through an indirect assertion of control, through smearing, or stay in a position of withdrawal with haughty superiority. That will enable, as always, the resumption of the sensation of control. There's no fuel issue, because the booing's directed at her, and therefore she draws fuel from it. Also expect, of course, once more, the continuation of the necessity of instructing the various PR people to continue to issue supportive proclamations for the purposes of 
continuing to assert that control. And that goes into the downward spiral that I've talked about in an earlier part. The booing will not have been well received, and one can imagine that there would have been a furious response. A tantrum, argumentativeness, the appearance of ignited fury ranting about these individuals. And of course, Harry would have to sit there, head down, trying to avoid the various bananas of empowerment being thrown in his direction, the unsold copies of the bench of stench being flung around as there is that notable tantrum by way of a response to the threat to control. He, of course, isn't the threat. He hasn't caused it. But, as the intimate partner primary source, he has to bear witness to these reactions and along either retreat to the chicken coop and wait until the storm has blown over, as somebody at other flunky gives it yes ma'am, no ma'am, three bags full ma'am, or he tries to placate her herself by agreeing, and in so doing, driven by his own emotional thinking, continues to swallow the narrative that they were right to leave. Whichever way it's panned out with regard to the resumption of the assertion of control, it amounts to another bad day in Monty shit show for the Sussexes. But not that it will deter Harry's wife from continuing with the behaviours that she engages in, because her compartmentalisation, absence of accountability, rampant self-entitlement and lack of emotional empathy, all linked to her narcissism, aren't going to change. She will continue. She will not look at this and... Th think to herself, maybe I need to make some changes in my behaviour. No, you are all wrong, and she is absolutely right.